So this, my friend, is the before and this is the after. Pretty old photo. Let's take a look at it side by side. Now, keep in mind, this is completely colored by AI. No manual work. Now, if you try to do the same thing with Photoshop by going to Photoshop's Neural Filters, Filter Neural Filter, and let us turn on Colorize. Let's see how it does. Photoshop also tries to do it automatically. And this just is crap. Let's take a look at it side by side. On the left, you have this new AI. On the right, Photoshop. As you can see, the AI completely obliterates Photoshop's neural filters. Now, I have to be completely honest with you. This AI is not completely free, but I can help you make it free. This might get me banned, so I'm taking the risk for you. So please do leave a like and do consider subscribing. The website is called Palette FM. Now, before you jump onto this website, there is a twist. Wait for it. Just upload your photo. Let's pick this one. Click on open. Right now it's processing the original and this is the base palette. This is very conservative. Now if you're interested in how it all works, they have a dedicated tutorial on it. They have different presets that you can go through and you can turn on most of them. So in the background, they're processing. Now, as you can tell, it has done a much, much better job in deciding the boundaries of these colors. Now, as you hover through it, have a look, there's also a prompt here. Now that's more exciting. We'll get to it later. For now, you can also scroll through different presets. In my opinion, I think the colorful memories look fantastic here and you can download it. Now, as you try to download the HD version, it just asks you to pay. So how do we not pay? Well, just download the regular version. This is very low resolution. Now let us do some Photoshop magic to keep the original resolution, but use the colors from this new AI. So if you open the regular downloaded image from the AI website, you will notice that it's very low in resolution, pretty unusable. However, the borders and the colors are useful. So here's what we do. Here's the original image, right? With the original resolution, just drag and drop the colored image over the original image, just like this. You already see where we are going with this. Extend it, make sure you're aligning everything properly. So this should be fine. And now simply take a look at the magic. Change the blend mode from normal because we just wanna use the color to color. There you have the original resolution and the color from the AI. Now on top of that, you can always go ahead and correct these colors by creating a brand new layer and select the brush. You can take a soft round brush, change the blend mode of the layer from normal to color. And then if you feel this color is right and this is just shifting too much, pick this color and fill up this area. That's all. So that's how you can correct these colors very, very easily. Now you can take a little more time to give it a little finishing touch, but this is much better than Photoshop's neural filters. Now the previous example, did you remember the prompts that we saw? What about these? Let us try a new photo right here. Let's try this one. So the real life story is that all of these colors are created with these prompts. So if you hover over it, you will see a prompt. If you click on this button, you get a chance to change the prompt. So this is what the AI thinks of the photo and it wants the photo in color film. So you can modify this. Let's add HDR to it. By the way, I learned it from the tutorial that was already on the website. Click on colorize. So when I made it HDR, this is how it does. In color film, let's remove it. Eye popping HDR color. Let's try it again. There we go. The colors get boosted even more. Now, if you look at the palettes right here, let's say colorful memories, you would notice if you look at the prompt, it says eye popping color anamorphic. So what the different palettes or presets are doing is that they're adding or modifying different prompts and thus creating different kinds of colors. So you can add something like sunset colors and see how that modifies the image. So as you can tell, adding the sunset colors right here just made it much more warmer. So you can just play with this AI. Only your imagination is your limitation. So no matter what you type, it's going to create a different color altogether all the time. Now, before we move on to the next example, I think I owe you a little bit transparency and the transparency is I am in no way shape or form sponsored paid or recommended or even reached out by any of these platforms that I'm going to be talking about today if I was actually paid why in the hell would I tell you about the hack to use the free version photo as the full version and blowing up the resolution in Photoshop so in the next example let's see if you can recolor photos that are obliterated by colored lights so in this case no matter how much I try to fix it with curves try to choose the neutral color no matter what I do it just will break the colors down so let's upload the same photo in the AI platform. So here's the base palette version and just by the looks of it, this is just incredible. It actually fixed it. Now it is not that bright. The resolution is not that great. We'll fix it in Photoshop. But for right now, let's take a look at different ones. The colorful memory is actually colors it wrong. We can try changing the prompt and see how it performs. But for now, the base palette just works perfectly. Let's download it and simply drag and drop the low resolution over the full resolution and just expand it. Make sure everything is aligning properly and then change the blend mode from normal to color. And there you have it. Super high resolution. Here's the before. Here's the after. 
fantastic difference. Now, what if I do the same thing in Photoshop? What kind of results will it yield? This is the palette version. In Photoshop, let's go to filter, neural filters. Let's try it and simply turn on colorize. So this, my friend, is the Photoshop version. Current layer is fine. Hit OK. So this is the Photoshop version. So here's the palette. Here's the Photoshop. You make your comparison. I think the palette version is much more natural and the coloring of the Photoshop is always leaking. Palette version, Photoshop version. Anyway, if it's too dark, you can always create a curves adjustment layer and just brighten stuff up like this. And there you have it. Is palette really the best out there when it comes to coloring black and white photos or any photo for that matter? Well, it depends upon the image and whether you want options and the kind of results you're looking for. Let's take a look at this. So here's an old photo that I tried to color with palette. And as you can tell, it has done a pretty good job. Even with selection and the boundaries, everything is just decent. If you look at Photoshop's color eyes, I think it's busy creating Avatar 3. I don't know what it's coloring, but some of you might ask, what about other platforms like MyHeritage? that we have talked about in previous videos. So if you go to myheritage.com in color, it also colors black and white or restores colors of old photos. Let's try that. It just looks much better. So here's the palette version and here is the MyHeritage version. Is it really better or is it just adding contrast? The advantage with palette is that you get a lot of options and you get to modify the prompt to get whatever style of colors you want. So let us try the base palette. Increase the contrast in Photoshop and see if my heritage is really better. Now I tried to match the contrast a little bit more. Tell me which one is better. So this clearly shows that the palette platform is mostly just adding colors, whereas my heritage sometimes can add unnecessary contrast. Take a look at this one. So this is the before, and this is the after. It's absolutely killing the details in the image. Now, of course, you can just extract the color using the color blend mode in Photoshop, but have a look at these areas. It is so high in contrast, completely overexposed. So there's basically no color there to extract from. Now, before we end the video, I wanted to give you a little bonus. Now, after you do all of this, you would notice that in old photos, there would be some scratches. It might be slightly blurred. So how do you get the details back? How do you restore? So after you do all the colorization stuff, or you can do this before as well, that's up to you. You can create a stamp visible layer at the very top by pressing Control, Alt, Shift and E, Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac. This creates a merged layer of everything that you see on the canvas. Let's name it Restore. Now, before we do anything, let us convert this layer into a smart object by going to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, hit OK. So that whatever filter you apply here, you can change the values later. Now let's go to Filter, Neural Filters, you know where we are going with this. Scroll down and turn on photo restoration. You can choose to do scratch reduction. You can enhance the face. That's up to you. And the best part is it processes on device. Now, sometimes it can still show this error that we have temporarily disabled this device because in some images, it, Photoshop just gets confused. So now when I decreased photo enhancement, it's just working. Anyway, let's take a look at before and after. So here's the before. See these scratches? And here is the after. As you can see, new faces have been reconstructed. Some scratches have been removed. And you can try this with different images, see how that performs. And there's a whole entire video on that. You can watch it right now. So which platform is the best? Well, to be honest, platforms are developing so fast and new platforms are coming in so fast that it's hard to tell. You have to try out different platforms, see what works for you. For now, what I like about Palette is that although it gives you a lower resolution for free, you can use Photoshop to kind of get the hack to get the higher resolution. The new thing about it is that you have different color palettes that you can try. And apart from that, you can try your own prompts, own color styles and see how they perform. So I wanted to take this moment to invite you to join me to specially thank Susie Hazelwood for all the photos. So I went to Pexels looking for old photos and Susie Hazelwood has the best collection of all the old photos in there. Especially if you look at collections by clicking right here, you would find a vintage set of photos. So you can use this for practice. Vintage found photos right there, 351. What a collection. I don't know where she got this collection from. Susie, if you're watching this, please let me know the secret of this amazing collection of vintage photos. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for making this video possible and helping keep Pix Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.